Today we're talking about the Japanese alternate art Strixhaven Mystical Archive cards. We're going to talk about the best place to find these cards and then I'm going to speculate a little bit on what the distribution will be like in collector booster packs. You're in the right place if you want to discuss the Mystical Archive and then also talk about the 10 best Mystical Archive cards that you're going to want to look out for if you are a fan of EDH and the video starts right now. Special thanks to our Patreon supporters who power our channel. Check out our Patreon for monthly giveaways, exclusive content, and even a starring role in our fanfight series. Link in the description below. Hello and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. I'm Jake. Welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel Are Magic. Today we are talking about the Japanese alternate art Strixhaven Mystical Archive variants. The best place to find those cards and then I'm going to talk about my 10 favorite Mystical Archive cards for EDH. Cards that I think you should look out for specifically. This video should kind of serve as your survival guide for the Japanese alternate art variants, specifically where to find those, uh, what I think the distribution is going to be like as far as uncommons, rares, and mythics per collector booster box. There will be a Strixhaven collector booster box, Is It Worth It video that will come out in the next couple days. That video will run tandem alongside this video, so if you're looking for something that focuses more on Strixhaven collector boosters in general, make sure to check that out. This is just going to be focusing on the Japanese alternate art variants. If you like these videos, click like and subscribe. It's the best way to support the channel with just the click of a button. If you are a fan of Jake and Joel, head on over to Patreon. You can get involved on a deeper level. First things first, let's talk about where to find these cards. All right, so we're over here at Collecting Strixhaven. I'm going to link this article in the description of the video. Make sure to go ahead and check it out. This is from the wizard's mothership itself, but you can come down here and everything that you need to know is pretty much summarized right in this one little blip. I'm gonna read this and then we're gonna get into my favorite cards. Mystical archive cards in boosters. Essentially, you really need to come down and just read this. The collector booster has a minimum of three mystical archive cards in every booster, including two foil etched mystical archive cards, for these two foil etched mystical archive cards, one will always be an uncommon and the other will always be either rare or mythic rare. I do appreciate that explicit verbiage so that we know exactly what to expect. One of the two will always be a global variant, meaning this, this regular variant. Look at this one here. This is the global variant. This is going to appear in all languages. And the other will always be a Japanese alternate art version. Yes, you heard that correctly. Everything that you need to know is that there will be Japanese alternate art versions in every collector booster pack. There will be one per pack. For example, if you open a foil etched Japanese alternate art mystical archive uncommon in your collector booster, the other foil etched mystical archive card will always be a global version of rare or mythic. There will be one etched foil Japanese mystical archive card per collector booster pack. So if you thought that you need to go buy Japanese boxes or if you need to track down the Japanese collector booster box to have a better chance of getting these cards, stop. You could just buy the English version. It's fine. Again, I'm going to do a more in-depth review on collector boosters. I'm going to compare Strixhaven collector boosters to the other collector booster products. I'm going to let you know what I think about this product compared to those, but again, that's gonna be in a different video. Now that you know that you can find these in every single collector booster pack, the Japanese variants, no matter the language, go ahead and take a sigh of relief. You'll be able to find it at the LGS if you just pick up a random pack. Let's go ahead and talk about the distribution though in a product that I kind of compared this to before making the video. And that product is Ikoria. Now, the reason why I chose Ikoria collector boosters to compare Strixhaven collector boosters, specifically the mystical archive slot, is because in Ikoria, you had a Godzilla card variant in the back of every single Ikoria collector booster pack. You would always pull some Godzilla variant. And remember, those Godzilla variants were actually uh, reskins of other cards in the set. But those Godzilla variants were mythic, rare, and uncommon. The only common was the egg. So I'm not going to think about the egg so much in this analysis. But essentially, in the Ikoria booster opening that I watched, the collector booster opening, the breakdown was this in that final slot of those Ikoria collector booster packs. Seven uncommons, four rares, and one mythic. 
That means in that final slot, seven out of 11 packs had an uncommon, four of them had a rare, and only one had a mythic. I think the mystical archive is gonna be similar. I think we're gonna see a lot of uncommons. I think we're gonna see a few rares and probably one mythic, maybe two mythics per Ikoria Collector Booster Box. And again, this is going to be in that Japanese alternate art etched treatment. So don't expect to be getting many mythics. Don't expect to be getting mostly rares. Do expect to be getting cards like Duress and Opt, but do expect to find like a Demonic Tutor or a Natural Order, something big, something splashy like a Tainted Pact, maybe once or twice per entire box. I do think that the Etched Foil Mythics will have a big premium. Obviously, they're going to be appearing less, but I do think as more people start to notice this, we will see these box prices start to creep up. All of this said, and again, leave me any questions and comments or concerns or whatever in the comments of the video. Let's go ahead and talk about the best possible pulls, in my opinion, if you're a fan of EDH, if you want to keep track of whatever the best mystical archive cards are, if you're trying to grow an EDH collection, if you want to have cards that are probably going to appreciate over time. I'm not saying all of these won't go up once the set comes out, but... As somebody who's been collecting for a long time, I do know what I'm looking for, and I'm going to let you know what I'm looking for, and maybe it's similar to what you are. So let's get into it. Now, these are in no particular order. We're over here at MTG Stocks. I like to use this resource. It's a great site. Again, 63 Mystical Archive cards total, and this is their rarity. I went ahead and I did this for you. There are 15 Mythics, there are 30 Rares, and there are 18 Uncommons. So do expect lots of rare and uncommon pulls and very few mythic pulls per box. All right, I've said that enough. Let's talk about my 10 favorite mystical archive cards for EDH. Demonic Tutor. It's been printed into the ground. It's an oldie, but a goodie. It's one of these cards that shows up in tons and tons of master sets. It continues to be reprinted, but it always rebounds in price. It's one of these cards that people are just like, you know, they always pick up a Demonic Tutor. In this product, Demonic Tutor is going to be a mythic rare. So in that foil etch treatment, if you can find it for a good price, definitely jump on it. Again, nothing here is financial advice. This is all just an opinion. It's going to be what I'm doing. Next up, we have Negate, and this card will be printed at Uncommon in the Mystical Archive. So do expect to find them a lot, but don't expect the price on this card to stay low. Negate is a very popular EDH card. It has a wide range of uses and so do expect players to pick this up. Whether you believe it or not, Negate is a highly played commander staple. We're gonna follow up Negate with Teferi's Protection. This card is gonna be printed at Mythic in this product, in the Mystical Archive, so do expect it to be very rare and highly sought after. When this card originally came out, it was undervalued. I remember getting pre-sale a playset of Teferi's Protection for $8 a card way back when it first came out, was first spoiled. It did have a spike shortly after its debut in an MTG multiverse and since then has been a staple in white. The card is absolute heat and again it will be mythic in this product and having only four printings, one of them in a secret layer and one of them a judge promo, do expect this card to be one of the chase cards of the set and do expect to pay a high premium. Next up we have Time Warp. This card made its debut in Tempest and has been an EDH staple ever since the conception of EDH. For people that do like taking turns, this card is printed at Mythic and will be Mythic in the Mystical Archive. So just keep this one on your radar. Again, this one will be very rare. Pimp Factor is a big thing in EDH, so you do have to take into account the art on this card and if you think players are really going to want it. But for me, it will be one of the cards that I will be chasing as it is an extra turn effect with no big drawback. Typically with an extra turn effect, it's going to get like shuffled into your library or it's going to be one of the kind of cards where it gets exiled afterwards. Time Warp is just absolute gas. Next up, we have Tainted Pact. This card has one printing ever in Odyssey, and now it's going to be printed twice here in this product, one in the Japanese variant and one in the global Mystical Archive variant at Mythic. This will be one of the biggest chase cards as normally cards that are scarce they have a lot of desirability. You can see here that Tainted Pact is encroaching $100, so this is one of the cards that really does need a reprint, and now it is finally getting one. It's a win condition in certain decks in CEDH. 
players race to the bottom and then play Jace or Athassa's Oracle and just win with Tainted Pack, just getting to the bottom of their deck as an EDH. No two cards, you can build a deck easily where no two cards have the same name. But yeah, this will be very scarce. And again, at Mythic, do expect players to be picking this up frequently. If you are looking for a Tainted Pack, make sure to set your notifications. And if you're just looking for the non-foil version, I'm sure you'll be able to pick that up as well. There will be lots of Mystical Archive cards appearing across all Strixhaven products. Next up, we have one of my favorite cards and a card that made its debut in Commander 2011. I guess that would be the first actual product that was endorsed and made by Wizards of the Coast for Commander. This card offers versatility in red in a way that red doesn't normally get. The owner of Target Permanent shuffles it into their library. So yes, this is a very attractive card for red players in EDH as it does offer versatility as red normally doesn't get permanent destruction. So it is permanent removal with a clause that can sometimes be good, but is sometimes uh, really bad for you as well. That being said, the card is extremely popular and is a staple for red EDH decks. As we head on into the close of this video, let's talk about some green cards and we're going to start it off with Natural Order. This card is very powerful. It will be mythic in the Mystical Archive, so it is going to be another one of these cards that will be highly sought after, whether it's competitive or casual. And it is my assumption, again, that there are only going to be one or two foil mythic etched Japanese alternate art, all of the adjectives appearing in each collector booster box. So with these collector booster boxes right now around $211, $220, I do expect the price to go up a little bit once, once people start realizing how rare some of these cards are going to be. Yeah, Natural Order, very strong. I got my first copy in Eternal Masters, but I am interested. Obviously, if I can find one of the cool Mystical Archive cards, that will be great as well. Frozen Grip, this is a card with a lot of printings as well that made its debut all the way back in Time Spiral. This card is great. I love Split Second. Anything that's just like, nope, it's done. This resolves first. Very good, very attractive in EDH. Artifact and Enchantment Destruction, Spot Removal. I love spells like this for EDH. There are some people that are like, no, just do your linear strategy, try to win first. I like being able to respond. I like being able to interrupt what my opponents are doing. I like playing cards like Crows and Grip. I like spot removal. Again, there are there's so many spells that didn't make this list, like Lightning Bolt and Counterspell and Doom Blade and just like Inquisition of Kozilek. There's like, there's really, really good cards that are in the Mystical Archive that aren't on this list that just couldn't make the list because of cards like Crows and Grip that are just, they're just better. All right, let's get into the final card here and talk about Cultivate. Whether you believe it or not, this mass printed card is easily one of the most played EDH cards. So many people play Cultivate. It just lets you fix your colors for a very reasonable amount of mana. One goes onto the battlefield, one goes into your hand. It's simple. It's direct, it's to the point, it's great. Cultivate is going to be in this product printed in the Mystical Archive at Uncommon. So do expect to find it frequently in the etched foil spot, but I will say again, it will be because it is highly desired and because it is a very popular EDH card, do expect it to dip, but don't expect it to stay down there that low forever. I would pick one up if this is the art that you like, if you are a fan of the Mystical Archive art, because I do expect many people to be acquiring this card. Again, there's fantastic cards on this list like Lightning Bolt and Counterspell, Inquisition of Kozilek, Duress, Doomblade, Dark Ritual was so close to making this list. Faithless Looting, what happened with that art? I don't, I don't even know. I hope you enjoyed this list. This is going to be the Mystical Archive Survival Guide. If you need any additional info, just leave a question in the comments and we'll all help you answer it. Everybody's here. We're all trying to get the best information. Again, if you're looking for a breakdown of Collector Boosters Strixhaven in general, look out for that video in the next couple days. These videos are going to run alongside each other and you can check in with that one as well. Make sure that you're subscribed. Until next time, I'm Jake with Jake and Jeweler Magic. I hope you have a nice rest of your day and study up on the Mystical Archive because there will be classes in session soon. And trust me, Professor Onyx is going to be going over how to use Putrefy in the best way. It's going to be a whole thing. Woo!